Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, and a handful of days ago, I put out a video talking about my all overrated NBA team for 2020, and you guys showed that video a ton of love with the views and the likes and the comments and things like that. So in this video, I wanted to go the other way around with my all underrated 2020 NBA team. Now really quickly before the video gets started, I do wanna tell you guys that I'm putting out a ton of content over on my gaming channel as well. Gaming Logically, there's a link to it down in the description below. Doing a lot of Warzone stuff over there, so if you're interested in that at all, then be sure to check it out. But with that shameless plug out of the way, as always, if you're enjoying this type of content, then subscribing is a great way to keep up with the channel and leaving a like rating is also a great way to let me know that not only are you enjoying the content, but it also helps the video out a ton. With that said, let's go and get started. Okay, so just like the overrated video, I'm gonna do a player at each of the five positions, but it won't really be exact. It's more just a one, two, three, four, and five, rather than the whole point guard through center thing. So to start it off, is a player that I feel like a lot of people know about, but I'm not sure a lot of people know exactly how good he's going to be. Maybe not as good as he is right now. And it's Anthony Simons of the Portland Trailblazers. And this is the guy that took a non-traditional path to get to the NBA. He had a high school career. He took one post-grad year at IMG Academy and then was drafted in the first round a few years ago. Didn't play a ton as a rookie, got more opportunities in his second season in Portland as you know, kind of the first scoring guard off the bench. And I just, I just think that this guy is really, really talented as a scorer, as an athlete. He's going to continue to develop as a shooter. I understand that the statistics, especially from an efficiency standpoint, don't look great for a second year player, but he is still young. And Portland has a history of developing guys like this that they draft in the first round, especially guards, and developing them into really, really good NBA players. When you're comparing Simons' stats to CJ McCollum's first couple years in the league, obviously there were injuries involved there, but there's a pretty well set pattern here in Portland of guards that continue to improve year after year. And I think Simons is going to be one of those guys. And I also think he's a good player right now. He can get to the basket, he can shoot, he can score in the mid range. And he's a guy that I just think has a lot of potential moving forward. So it's kind of one of those weird things where like, I think he's underrated because people don't know how good he is now. He's not great, but he's a good player. But also, I don't think people understand how good he can be moving forward. I don't think he's going to be an all-star or anything, but I think he's going to be a really, really good player, kind of a poor man's version of CJ McCollum. Worst case scenario for me, for Anthony Simon. So that is a guy that I definitely think is underrated. Now, as an added bonus in comparison to the overrated team video, I also wanted to give some honorable mention for each position for the underrated players video. At the one spot, that player is Monty Morris, a really, really good backup point guard for the Denver Nuggets, one of the better, more efficient, true backup point guards in the league, someone that can facilitate, can score it a little bit, and really isn't gonna hurt your team. I decided he ultimately just wasn't a big enough name to put on this list, but if I was going to pick another player at the one as an underrated player in the league, I would pick Monty Morris. We move on now to the two spot, and I considered not putting this guy on this list because I, a lot of people know that he's a really, really good player, but I still think that he's underrated and it's Shea Gilgis Alexander. And he is a part of that stacked 2018 draft class and he gets compared to guys like Luca and to, to Trey Young. But I, I really think that Shea Gilgis Alexander has an argument. I'm not saying that he is, but I think he has the argument to potentially be the second best player in that draft class. And I've talked about it in the past and I wouldn't necessarily rank him as the second best player in that class. Obviously when you're talking about Luca, and you're talking about Trey Young, but Shea Gilgis Alexander does so many good things on the basketball court. He can play on the ball and play making, play off the ball and shoot and score off of it. He can defend extremely well. He has great size. He has great length. There's, there's not really a hole in his game, which is so strange and, and so unique for a player as young as he is. Now, certainly he can grow and develop in plenty of areas in his game as most second, third year players can. But I really think that this is a guy that's going to be a future borderline all NBA, certainly an all-star caliber player moving forward in the future. And I think right now, a lot of people still have this opinion of him of like, oh, he's a nice, solid player. And a lot of the credit for how well Oklahoma City played this season goes to Chris Paul, and rightfully so. But I think Shea Gilgis Alexander needs a little bit more notoriety for what he did this season and for how good he is at such a young age. And it's easy to be overshadowed by Chris Paul and his own team, and then Luca and Trey Young within his own draft class. So a guy that I know a lot of people really like, but I think that he needs to be appreciated even more, and thus he's underrated. The honorable mention underrated player at the two spot is going to be Luke Kennard, a player that had a really good season this year, improved in a couple of different statistical categories. Still waiting to see whether that's just as a result of increased responsibility or if he's actually gotten better as a player, but a guy that I think generally is a bit underappreciated at the two guard spot. Next up now at number three, and this is a guy that the, the, the player at the three and the four, you can really switch around however you want to. Just 
just either of the forward spots. Uh, this is another guy that I think people know is good, but I don't think they fully understand how good he can be and the upside there. And it's Jonathan Isaac. And I think that he is, when healthy, which is a big issue for him, one of the best defenders in the entire league, one of the most versatile defenders in the entire league, playing the three, the four, maybe even the five, has incredible length, needs to obviously get bigger and stronger, needs to work on his offensive game. But if he can become just an above average offensive player, how good he is defensively is going to make him an incredibly, incredibly valuable player. And I think that people kind of think of him still as a little bit of a project right now because the offensive game isn't all there, but I don't think they fully understand how good the defensive stuff is. Again, with his length, with his activity, with his versatility, his ability to play multiple positions, his ability to defend on the perimeter against some of the best perimeter players in the league, while also adding a little bit of rim protection off the ball. There's a very unique skill set, both physically and in terms of the skills that he brings to the table defensively for Jonathan Isaac that I think is definitely underappreciated and underrated about him. And in a situation in Orlando that doesn't get a ton of publicity and a, a part of a crowded front court that has been crowded for a very, very long time in Orlando. I think Jonathan Isaac is a guy that needs a little bit more love thrown his way. And I definitely think that he is an underrated player because, you know, the defensive stuff doesn't get as much attention, you know, as the offensive stuff. If he, if he was as good of an offensive player as he is a defensive player, we'd be talking a lot more about Jonathan Isaac. And hopefully we will moving forward if he continues to improve on that end of the floor. The underrated player of the three is Kelly Oubre. We just talked about him a little bit in the What's Next video for the Phoenix Suns. Had a really, really good season. And as long as he continues to rehab well from his injury that he did sustain at the end of the year should be a really good really productive player over the next handful of seasons for Phoenix but again because it's the Suns and because he plays with another really good perimeter player in Devin Booker doesn't get a ton of attention around the league but again a player that I think is underrated next up now is a player that like I said you could put him at the three the four whatever and it's Rui Hachimura of the Washington Wizards and I've talked about him in a handful of different videos really briefly but it, there's just something about watching him play that makes me feel like he belongs in the league. He's got like this Harrison Barnes type thing where everything he does is very square. He's not going to be a crazy athlete, but everything he does just seems so solid and so fundamentally sound. And it's it's very Harrison Barnes like to me. And I know that that could be like a weird comparison because see, some people, you know, have bad memories of Harrison Barnes having really bad finals performances. And they think that maybe he's one of the more over overpaid players in the league over the past couple of seasons. But Rui Hachimura kind of gets forgotten about with his, within his own draft class. He was a bit of a surprise to be picked where he was. But whenever you watch him, like I said, just solid is the best way that I can describe it, whether it's in the mid-range, getting to the rim, some post moves. Uh, obviously, he's going to continue to expand his range out of the three-point line as well. I don't know that he's ever going to be like an all-star caliber guy. I think that's the absolute ceiling for him. But he's still a very, very good player and someone that doesn't get talked about. And like I said, just... It has room to grow and was a little bit of an older prospect by current draft standards, but still a guy that I think just, he's not going to hurt you too much throughout his career. He's going to do a lot of good things for you offensively and defensively, and he's a player that I definitely think is a bit underappreciated and underrated. The honorable mention at the four spot is Paul Millsap. This is a player that is a veteran, can do a lot of things, a really good all-around player. Isn't the most exciting guy in the world to watch play, but just does a lot of good things. And I feel like his name has kind of fallen off recently since he's been in Denver. He's had some injury issues and things like that. A little bit more under the radar on that team in comparison to some of his previous stops, but still a really, really good player. Last up now at number five is one of the surprise players of the entire season. And it's Rashawn Holmes of the Sacramento Kings. And Rashawn Holmes is a player that has always had the physical skill set to be a really productive big in the NBA. And he's bounced around to a whole bunch of different teams. And once he came to Sacramento and they had some injury issues in the front court, he really stepped up as a awesome starting caliber five man in Sacramento. Now, it's not like he's going to be an all-star or anything. When you're talking about points, rebounds, blocks, things like that, and the efficiency with which he scores from the floor and the athleticism that he provides, which is perfect for that Kings team with all the other athletes that they do have on that team, he really established himself as an incredibly valuable player and someone that is probably going to be getting a nice new contract at some point here moving forward. And it was just really strange to see such a big leap from a player that, like I said, had had an issue just finding a spot in a rotation and finding a spot that wanted to keep him around for multiple seasons. And for the Kings to get a player like that and to, to have him grow and develop as much as he did was, was huge for them. But I also don't think that people really know that it happened because it's the Sacramento Kings and people don't really pay that much attention to them as a franchise generally unless it's bad things, right? So a huge positive year for Rashawn Holmes and somebody that I think is one of the most underrated bigs in the entire league. I'm hoping that he can continue to sustain that production and continue to develop 
as a player and continue to you know get a little bit more attention towards his game because as I said I think he is certainly an underrated player in the league in 2020. And then to finish the video off we have our honorable mention at the five spot and it's Derek Favors a player that was really helpful to that Pelicans team once he did return provided them some nice veteran leadership at the five spot can score efficiently inside can defend very well a very good rebounder as well another guy in a theme in this video that is just a solid player is it going to hurt you with son and as a result is the honorable mention for an underrated player at the five spot and yeah there you have it that is going to be the end of today's video and I thank you all very much for watching as I said in the beginning I've got a ton of gaming logically stuff coming out over the last couple of days so be sure to go check that out it would really help me out a lot uh, and I just really appreciate any and all support you guys throw my way over there. But as I said in the beginning of the video, my name is Tucker. Hope you enjoyed. If you missed any of my previous videos, whether it's on this channel or any others, you can check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.